Hello everyone, my name is Caroline Odom and I'm a student of the class of 2022 studying risk management and insurance and journalism at the University of Georgia. I'm also host of the lead podcast, a podcast published by the Cox Institute within the Grady College of Journalism and Mass Communication that helps students learn how to get ahead in the media industry by interviewing the people who did. At the University of Georgia, learning doesn't end when the diploma arrives in the mail. We're a community of lifelong learners committed to continued growth and to inquiring into the nature of things. We're spirited and passionate between the hedges and between the pages, we're curious, open-minded and ready to explore new worlds and voices. The UGA Alumni Association strives to develop diverse programming that will help to connect over 327,000 alumni around the world to their fellow alumni and to UGA. This new virtual book club, Between the Pages, provides an opportunity to enjoy and discuss works by alumni authors and fellow Bulldogs. And tonight, I'm pleased to welcome you to our third book club event featuring Chuck Bryant and moderated by Mamie Shepard, both of whom are fellow dogs. Chuck is the co-host of the Stuff You Should Know podcast and host of the Movie Crush podcast. Stuff You Should Know is one of the most popular shows in history and has allowed Chuck to spend most of his adult life researching, writing, and talking about some of the most interesting topics on earth. Chuck graduated from UGA in 1995 with a bachelor's degree in English from the Franklin College of Arts and Sciences. And tonight we're going to discuss Chuck's new book, Stuff You Should Know, an incomplete compendium of mostly interesting things. Armed with their inquisitive natures and a passion for sharing, Chuck Bryant and his fellow co-host Josh Clark, who also attended UGA, are taking their near boundless curiosity from your earbuds to the pages of a book for the first time. Follow along as they uncover weird, delightful, or unexpected elements of a wide variety of topics, digging into the underlying stories of everything, from the origin of Murphy beds, to the history of facial hair, to the psychology of being lost. Our moderator for the evening, Mamie Shepard, is a program manager for the Seacrest Studios at Monroe Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital at Vanderbilt and graduated from UGA with a degree in digital and broadcast journalism in 2013 from the Grady College of Journalism and Mass Communication. Shepard's roots run deep with the Ryan Seacrest Foundation. She has worked for the nonprofit since its beginnings at Children's Healthcare of Atlanta, first as a college intern and then helping to open and manage two additional Seacrest Studios. Edison Research and Rain News named Shepard to its audio 30 under 30. She has served on the Georgia Radio Hall of Fame Board of Directors, and she was the youngest member of UGA's 40 under 40 class of 2015. Tonight, Mamie will lead a discussion with Chuck for 20 minutes or so, and afterwards there will be time for you to submit questions. So please be thinking about what you'd like to ask and have those questions prepared. I'm excited to be with you all tonight, and I'm now going to give the floor to Mamie to proceed with leading our discussion with Chuck. Hello, everyone, and uh, Caroline, thank you so much for that lovely introduction. I'm so excited to be with you all tonight. Um, and like she said, if you have questions for Chuck, please drop them in the chat. We will get to those. And uh, I'm excited to bring Chuck on. He has some exciting news about his book, besides the fact that it's just been released. Um, Chuck is a self-proclaimed edutainer, uh, and there are a lot of fans of the podcast joining us tonight, so we are so glad for that. 12 years, 1,300 podcasts later, and Chuck, here you are on Zoom with us tonight for Between the Pages. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Go dogs, Chuck. What what led you into the world of podcasting? You see your, your nice setup there. What What led you into this world? that all of our friends uh, on Zoom with, uh, with us know you from? Well, uh, before I answer that, congratulations on 40 under 40. Uh, I'm hoping to make 50 over 50 <laughs> when I turn 50 next March. Well, congratulations on this book. You have some exciting news about this book that you just told me. Yeah, this is really cool. It worked out. Uh, the timing is impeccable because as of about an hour ago, uh, the New York Times bestseller list refreshes on Wednesdays. And we're number two in our category. Yes, that's so exciting. Yeah, yeah that's very cool. Little feather yeah. in the old cap. What an amazing feeling. Um, lots of people are saying congratulations to that. So okay, before we get to the book, tell us how you first got into podcasting. Well, I was a writer for a website called uh, HowStuffWorks.com. And just, you know, writing these articles um, sort of uh, what you ended up hearing on the podcast, those were the articles. They were 
um, you know, sort of how to's and informational and science based, historic based, pop culture. And our boss at the time, uh, who's actually now our boss again, many years later, said, why don't you guys uh, initially just to Josh, why don't you start a podcast? And he scrambled to find out what a podcast was because it was so sort of off the radar back then. And it was it was just a work assignment. And he went through a couple of different co-hosts and then landed on me. We were friends from work and we had just a good chemistry from the beginning and our, our benefits of being uh, early entrance. Uh, I always like to say that it's, I feel sort of like we bought a, a little fixer upper house in a, what turned out to be a really nice neighborhood 12 years later. And it just, it sort of grew very organically from the beginning and caught hold. And we were smart enough to, I think, just not ask any questions and to run with it. Mm -hmm. And so at what point do you move from podcasting to be like, we need to make this into a book? Well, we've been wanting, um, that's a good question. We've been wanting to write a book for a while now. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we first started batting around the idea probably like six years ago and hooked up with a book agent um, at the Writer's House in New York, a really great uh, literary agency. And we spent a year or so uh, kind of discussing ideas with him and he was awesome. And it just, it kind of petered out, I think, because uh, how much time it takes to write a book. Yeah. It's a lot. And um, then many, how much time? Uh, boy, I mean, it's a, it's a whole job into itself. So the past, um, up until uh, publish the past six months or so have been pretty nuts. It, it was a good time, quite honestly, to do it during the lockdown because yeah. we were locked at home anyway. But Flatiron, uh, our publisher came along uh, through the company, through iHeartMedia and presented a really good deal and said, we'll supply you guys with a co-writer uh, to help out because it is a lot of work. And we felt a little weird about that at first, uh, but then we realized pretty quickly how key that was have someone that really knew the ins and outs of book writing and uh, his name is Nils Parker. He's great. Uh, he's on the cover of the book there. We, we made sure he got his own byline and um, he was really a champion for us from the beginning and it all came together pretty fast after we got the right team together. Yeah well and it's a great book. We're gonna dive more into it in a little bit. Uh, something fun to know about you Chuck is that you are a Georgia alum. I love that. Go dogs. Uh, what is it about your experience at UGA that makes you proud to be an alum living in Atlanta? Boy, uh, I spent six years in Athens and that should probably tell you something. Um, and that <laughs> was six years ever. <laughs> <laughs> it was, that was completely by choice. I think I buzzed <laughs> through my first three academic years in three years and then took another three years to finish my final academic year because I was just having such a good time. I mean, you know how Athens is. It's, it's the best. I miss it so much. And I made, you know, my lifelong friends now are all, um, you know, made some friends since then, but most of my, <laughs> my core group are still these college friends. Yeah. We all ended up living within like five or six miles of each other in Atlanta, kind of by chance. We didn't even plan it. We just gravitated toward one another. And, uh, you know, I just, I didn't want to leave. Athens has that, mm -hmm. that thing that, uh, you, you either get out or you kind of stay forever. And both of them are, are, I guess, decent choices, but I almost stayed forever. I was close. It's always in your heart. Athens is always there. Since you spent six years there, what are like, you, you must know it really well. What are your favorite places to go? Like when you go back to Athens uh, for a visit, where's your first stop? You know, now the first thing I do when I come back into town is I usually drive by my old houses that I lived in just to kind of check up on those and let yeah. the, the wave of nostalgia kind of roll over me. Um, so I go and like, uh, I'll show like my wife, some of my favorite places. Um, last Father's Day, we took my daughter, who's now five and a half, I think she was about four then. Uh, we took her to Athens for the first time and walked around North Campus and I showed her my old houses, which didn't fully register, but she loved walking around campus. And we walked down to the stadium and we went to the bookstore and bought her some stuff. So my first stops are always sort of those nostalgia trips. And then uh, I'm usually there, if it's not like a little family day visit, I'm usually there to see a show at the 40 Watt or the Georgia Theater. Yeah. So okay. I, will, I will stop in there. Um, sadly, my, my bar, uh, the Georgia bar is now gone as of last year, which is very sad. 
but yes. I might pop into the globe for a beer. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to go to the Euro rep to eat, but I heard that is shutting down too. <laughs> So what I'll usually do now is Google where to eat in Athens because there's so many new places. You know, 95 was a lifetime ago. All right. So here's some things that we, I feel like we should know as the audience listening. So if you'll fill in the blank for me, basically okay. I'm in Athens. Okay. When I started school at UGA, I wanted to be. Oh boy. Uh, probably a teacher. My oh. parents were, my dad was a principal and my mom was a teacher. And I think that's probably why I ended up being an English major. Mm -hmm. uh, although I was just chatting with Caroline before uh, and all you guys, I was, uh, I was going to be a journalism major. Couldn't get into the journalism school because it was super hard back then. Uh, and I'm sure still is. And I, and I definitely always wanted to write. So my first instinct was journalism, maybe newspaper, magazine writer. And then I went to English and said, I'll probably end up being a teacher. You're a teacher now. Teacher. I am in a weird way. <laughs> you are. Um, okay. My favorite dining hall was. Oh man. What <laughs> was it? It was the one over. Uh... God, there was a dorm right next to it. Bolton. Bolton. Snelling. Bolton. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I lived in Reed yeah. Hall, but, um, and Reed had, I think sort of the best location on campus as far as being in the mix and being right there next to the stadium. But uh, the food wasn't so great around me. So I would travel over made the bridge. Made the track. Yeah, I made the okay. track. What about, I listened to a lot of? Indie rock. Indie rock. Yeah, I was a 40 watt kid. So I was uh, yeah. in, in the Uptown Lounge and sort of um, these old school, the Rockfish Palace, these places that are long gone. 40 watts still there, thankfully. but. I was there when the original 40 watt was there when it was literally a 40 watt light bulb uh, was the only light source in that in that yeah. hall. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, okay. I wore a lot of. I wore a lot of flip flops and cargo shorts and t-shirts <laughs> and baseball hats. Kind of what I wear now. Um, the style back then, what was the uh, duck head was the big. <laughs> like khaki to wear, I remember. Yep. So like cut off duck heads were pretty rocking. And I think I had some of those. <laughs> um, okay. This is fun. My hardest class was? Uh, anything in, in science. Uh, I, I was not great. And, and stuff you should know listeners that are logging on are probably laughing because I always had problems with the science topics as an English nut. <laughs> so anything science, I actually made uh, one f in my life in all of my schooling years actually that's the only thing i ever made below a c um, is i failed biology kind of on purpose at georgia because i hated it and i had never failed a class <laughs> so i kind <laughs> of gave up on it and i ended up um having to take botany my senior year in order to fulfill my science requirement and it was a very nerve-wracking thing to uh, back then you had to bike over to the science building, which is, you know, I don't even remember. It was way out from, from where I used to hang out. And you had to go to the, to the school classroom door where they would tape your grades on the thing. There was no oh. like checking online. And yeah. So it was fraught with peril. And I actually, uh, I passed botany and got my diploma and that was a big, big relief. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then the last one, my favorite thing about UGA is Athens and just the town and that campus. Uh, it, it's great. It's, it's one of the great college towns and one of the great schools. It was, and you know, Georgia's gotten a lot tougher uh, to get in now and is, is um, now looked at as kind of one of the great state universities in the country. Uh, it was a little bit easier back then to get in. Uh, it was sort of before the days of those tough uh, requirements, but um, I actually did have pretty good SAT scores and, and, uh, but it was kind of the thing where like, if you wanted to go to Georgia back then and you lived in Georgia, you could go to Georgia. So it's, uh, I'm kind of glad that they've made it a little bit tougher, but it was, it was a great school. I love it. I miss it all yeah. the time. I know. Well, and it's so good to, I feel like we're, we're there without being there. Yeah. Uh, 
being on on this Zoom tonight. So we're really glad for all the, all of our friends watching. Um, don't forget to drop a comment if you have questions for Chuck. Um, well, and and to be as successful as you are, you have to always have like a little bit of curiosity. Were you curious as a student at UGA? I was. Um, I wish like I wish I was more curious about science and those topics that I didn't fully invest in. It's kind of one of those things we're looking back. I was definitely interested in my major classes right? and really worked really hard at those. And I kind of saw math and science as something that I had to get through. So as a, you know, as an older gentleman now, I look back and think, you know, I really should have, because I love gardening now and that is botany. And I probably would have learned a lot of really great things <laughs> if I hadn't just tried to, you know, just skate by by passing. So I do have some regrets in that way, but uh, I loved my major classes. Like you couldn't pull me away from those from Park Hall. It was the best. Yeah, that curiosity has served you well uh, and has made the podcast such a huge success. Some of the most loved episodes of the podcast include topics that have things to do with spam or hangovers or cheese <laughs> and Barbie and pinball. Uh, is there a topic you are excited to research that you haven't had the chance to yet? Yeah, you know, there's uh, that's a good question because we've done probably close to 1400 episodes now and yeah. so many that it's hard. Like a lot of these, I don't even remember having done them. Like I will think of a topic and Josh will send me an email and said, we've already done that. We did that nine years ago. <laughs> and I'll be like, Oh man, that's crazy. I don't remember that at all. Sure. But um, Scientology is always one that we have wanted to bite off. Mm -hmm. uh, I think when the, the big book and documentary came out, mm -hmm. we sort of cooled on it a bit because it was so exhaust exhaustive and such a, a great take on it. But I think enough time has passed since then where a nice chunky two-part episode on Scientology would be a lot of fun. That will be fascinating. How long does it typically take you to research a topic? If you have an idea for one, how long does it take you to research it? Well, we do, we record generally, unless we're trying to bulk up for like a vacation or something, we record two episodes a week and release two episodes a week. And we always stay a few weeks ahead. Um, just in case of, you know, something happens or whatever, and we can't get in the studio. So doing those two episodes generally takes about two and a half to three days, including the recording and the, um, we call it QA, like we always have to listen to the show afterward, after it's been edited to make sure everything's, you know, professional and sounds good. So counting the QA process, it's about two and a half to three days these days it used to be wow. a full week but yeah you, know, you get in a groove after this many years this week it's what cabbage patch kids and pimento cheese right? yeah pimento cheese is the, sh <laughs> the shorty we started doing short shorty. stuffs on wednesdays yeah. that are like 10 or 12 minutes long and those are actually a lot of fun uh what is coming out thursday i'm not even sure I'm glad you did one on cabbage patch kids because i have a lot of questions there. <laughs> okay <laughs> did you have one about of Cabbage Patch Kids? Oh yeah. You did? Okay. I knew that the that the Babyland General, I knew that's in Georgia. Yeah. I've always been curious about it. So it sounds it's like a little creepy and weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot to unpack there. <laughs> yeah, there definitely is. Yeah. Uh it's fun though. I mean, kids love it. And yeah. I, I I they they came out when I was really young. And I tell the story of my sister and she's probably like 1980, got one of the first 100, you know, handmade dolls by Xavier Roberts. And uh, I think it, that doll is actually worth a little bit of money now, believe it or not. You still have it? She has it. She has it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was my sister. every time you go to her house. <laughs> its name is Chuck, though. That's what's so funny is they're pre-named and the doll's name was Chuck. And oh, it, it was, yeah, it's pretty funny. That's pretty good. <laughs> well, and I mean, this book is so amazing. And I love that each chapter is is standalone. Um, yeah. You, know, you can kind of read each chapter and it's a different subject. So Josh picked 13 of the topics and you picked 14, right? Yeah. How did you kind of narrow it down to figure out which topics you wanted to include in this book? Well, kind of the same way we do the podcast, you know, we, we kind of keep a, our, each of us keep a master list of just things mm -hmm. that interest us and just, you know, walking around in the word, uh, world, you'll see something that you think, oh, like, what's that all about? Like, whether or not it's, how do they make a bridge or how do they dig a tunnel 
-hmm. under a river, you know, how do they dig those tunnels to New York, stuff like that, just sort of leaps out at us and fascinates us. And then for the book, we came up with a big, big list. And with our co writer, Nils and the, um, and the publisher, they kind of helped whittle it down to just have a diverse range of things. And uh, we knew we always wanted it, uh, like you said, and I'm glad you like the fact that it is, they are standalone chapters. It's, uh, it's, we like to call it a bathroom reader. That's sort of what they mm -hmm. called these books back in the 70s and 80s. Um, is a book that you kind of grew up with having in the bathroom and you would mm -hmm. go in there and you would have five or 10 minutes to read, you know, before iPhones, yeah. you yeah. would have something to read instead of checking your social media. And you can just pick pick any chapter at any point. You don't have to read yeah. it from beginning to end, which is kind of a fun thing, I think. But I love it. It changes it up. You go from cyanide to donuts. And I think right. <laughs> yeah. <really> great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, something else that's really great in the book is that you have a little red microphone icon um, in the book next to topics that you've done. Yeah, there it is. That you've done uh, podcasts about, and there's kind of like a glossary in the back of the book too, uh, to let to let fans know about that. You, and I know you've said that it's hard to keep track of all the podcasts you've done. Do you have one that is your favorite that you've done? Hmm. Uh, you know, we did some episodes years ago, a couple on uh, the Muppets and then one on Jim Henson that are pretty special. Mm -hmm. um, aside from that, it's hard to pick a single episode. Uh, I tend to categorize and just say, I really love uh, delving into unknown history uh, more than any of the rest. Those have kind of ended up being a lot of my favorite episodes or historical events or people that uh, you just may never have learned about in class mm -hmm. or just didn't get their due in the history books. So we like to sort of, um, those are some of my favorite ones for sure. Little known yeah. history. Is it kind of one of those things you're always looking for what could be, what could be a topic? Yeah. Yeah. I like to keep a big list. And when that list gets smaller, mm -hmm. I don't panic, but <laughs> I'll look at the list. And I'll be like, Oh, I only got like seven or eight things. And um, then I'll turn my brain on to sort of the awareness mode. Mm -hmm. uh, so I can kind of just be a little more thoughtful in day-to-day -day life about stuff that interests me. Um, yeah. But we're both curious guys. So it's, it's, it's always sort of in awareness mode. If I'm yeah, being it kind of comes naturally, right? Yeah. Um, besides your time at UGA, what do you attribute to the success of the show and the creation of your book? You know, I think, uh, again, I'd be lying if, if I wasn't honest and said that being an early entrant into podcasting helped, but people liked it right away. And it, it was a very organic growth. Um, we never had some big marketing machine behind us and it was very much word of mouth. And I think that what we figured out after all these years is just that we didn't know what we didn't know. And we went in there, we don't script things. We don't even say, you take this part, I'll take this part. We'll put this joke here. We don't outline anything. We just work from the same body of notes and have a conversation. And there's a little bit of editing, but sometimes there's not even a single edit that goes in. And, uh, we left in the ums and uhs and we just wanted to make it like a conversation. And that's the yes. feedback we've always gotten over the years is you guys feel like you're our friends. It feels yeah. like back in college, hanging out at a bar, talking to someone interesting. Yeah. And that's sort of, we, again, we were kind of smart enough to know, like not to mess with it. Yeah. I, I love that too. And I think, don't you think curiosity and exploring the world, they're kind of universal inspirations uh, and a lot of people identify with that. You guys are curious and you are setting out to find out the answers we all want to know. Do you spell donut D-O-U-N-U-T or D-O-N-U-T? These are things that we should know 100%. Yeah, personally, I spell it D-O-N-U-T-S, uh, not with a G-H. Yes. What about yeah. you? How do you spell it? Um, you know, I prefer to eat them instead of spell. <laughs> if you were to text somebody to say, bring home some donuts, what would you do? I would probably spell it like you did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's my but, preferred but spelling. The long, the long uh, way to spell it is kind of, people have kind of gotten out of that habit, haven't they? I think so. Yeah. It seems yeah. a little stuffy now. <laughs> well, and Chuck, you certainly know a lot of stuff. What is something you know for sure? Oh boy. That's a hard question. Uh, I'll cop out and and suck up and say I know for sure that 
that Athens is the best college town in the country and that it's uh, it has the hearts of so many graduates and alumni. And uh, it's, I, I waited for a joke around with Francis who, um, who initially reached out to me a couple of years ago about doing stuff with the university. And uh, she's become a pal now. And Francis, I said, I've been waiting on this call for years. I've been waiting on the love <laughs> from UGA. Like, yeah. what, do, what do I got to do to have my own university reach out and want me to do stuff for them? So it's been fun this past couple of years doing, doing events and stuff with the alumni group. Well, and I have to say, Chuck, you picked a really nice color scheme for this book. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Red and black have been our colors. I don't think we really thought about it back then, but it ended up sort of uh, sort of working out. It matches the shirt. I think they need to really have well. you do they need to have you do commencement, Chuck. Oh boy. Wow. Well It'd be good. I, I, I didn't ask for that, but uh No, that's me volunteering <laughs> and I think that that should happen. <laughs> Holy cow, that would be amazing. That would be exciting, right? Yeah, that would be Think super about exciting. all the facts you could give to some to all these students. Yeah, that that would be fun. Yeah. I can't imagine. They need uh, to know some of this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I know Francis is listening. I don't know. You could put in a word, whatever. <laughs> that would be super well, cool. I know that we have some some questions that have been coming through the chat. So let's see if we can pull them up. All right. So that we can have some see if you can answer some of these questions. Okay, so uh, Leanne says, hi Chuck, hi Leanne. Uh, I'm a super fan and have listened to all the episodes since 2008. I'm oh, so wow. proud of you and Josh. I haven't started the book yet, but I'm curious if Jerry makes any appearances in the book. Jerry is, uh, I don't think Jerry is in the book. I think we mentioned her maybe in the foreword. Uh, Jerry's our longtime producer from the get-go and she's sort of the, the silent invisible third character of the show. Uh, and, and there's always been a lot of speculation over the year, whether or not Jerry really exists. And at the end of the, the run, we're just going to kind of tell everyone that Jerry was made up this whole time, but Jerry is super real and she's amazing. <laughs> she's like my sister. And um, yeah, I think we might mention her in the forward, but she's, she's not really in the book too much. I feel terrible. She should have been. That's a good question. All right. Quinn says, check mate. Okay, Quinn has to be from Australia, maybe? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, love your work, and the book is fantastic. I have to say, though, what's up with not liking mustard? <laughs> that just came out. We That pimento cheese shorty. Yep. Josh and I got into uh, as much of an argument as we get into on the show, because he <laughs> loves mustard. I don't like mustard. He was trying to get me to try Coleman's mustard, saying that I would love it. And I was like, I don't like mustard. Quit trying to get me to try mustard. I just, I've never liked mustard. I'm a mayo guy. You don't, don't like, like mustard at all. No, I don't. I know that makes me weird. Occasionally like weird. a honey mustard I can handle, but that's about okay. it. Okay. That's about it. Just mayo, no mustard. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Richard says, how did you select the topics you addressed in the book? How long, how long was the list of topics you had to go through? It was pretty long. I think if we ended up with, uh, what do we ended up with? 27. Mm -hmm. There may have been like 75 topics. And, you know, it was kind of interesting because we couldn't use anything that we had done as a podcast episode because mm -hmm. we didn't want to have it be like a retread or anything. Right. Uh, and that, you know, the list gets small and, and we were also, we're also protective of the podcast. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I don't want to eat up all these great topics, but we decided that after the book has been out for a bit, we can start kind of diving in and making some of these topics into podcast episodes. Yeah, yeah. that would be good. What was something that didn't make the cut? Oh boy. I'm trying, I think Scientology might've been in there actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to think of what else. And it was usually just, you know, excised because it was categorically too similar to something else on the list mm -hmm. or maybe too dark. I mean, we, we wanted the book to be pretty fun and mm -hmm. the podcast is fun and, and funny, but we'll, we'll handle some dark topics and some heavier stuff here and there for sure. But we kind of wanted to keep the book a little bit lighter. I think as dark as we got was Jack Kevorkian, uh, Dr. Death. Yeah. And there weren't a ton of jokes in that one, but yeah. he's super interesting. So I like that chapter. It is interesting. Uh, and it makes the perfect, you know, as we're going into the holidays, this is the perfect, perfect gift for anyone. 
especially the curious in your life. Um, it's a it's a great gift for the holidays. So it came out at just the perfect time. I think so. Um, yeah. You know, we knew we were going to get our our built in listener base was going to mm-hmm. buy some, and then we kind of worked with Flatiron on a plan to try and just get it you know, good placement at Barnes and Noble. And there's so much that we didn't even know that goes into that sort of release uh, Mm -hmm. approach and plan and the marketing. And, you know, we recorded these custom video spots to play in Target stores and got featured in Costco. So what we're hoping is this time of year, someone will just wander into a store, see it and think, well, this, this sounds like a good gift for uncle Phil. Yeah. (laughs) It's 20 bucks. Someone on the chat said, let's get it to number one on the New York Times bestseller list. And I say yes to that. Yes. Ina Garten. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> gotta take her out. <laughs> All right. So Elizabeth said, which part of the book, without giving too much away, are you most proud of? Well, I got to say, uh, it's, I mean, I love the the writing that Josh and Nils and I did, but I really just love the the look of it and part part mm-hmm. of the fun of a book is and especially a book like this is just putting together what it looks like and what the cover looks like and we worked with a great illustrator named Carly Minardo um, out of New York who really brought it to life with those cool illustrations and uh, the footnotes are a lot of fun and I think just sort of putting together what the book looks like in your hand was one of the most fun aspects of it and one of the things I'm most proud of uh, at the end of the book I'll see if I can find it and hold it up we have uh, articles on the Jersey Devil and on demolition derbies, mm-hmm. and we thought it'd be fun to do these indemnity waivers. So if you can see that, these little, it's like there's a lot of real legalese in there uh, where you can sign this indemnity waiver about being in a demolition derby or, uh, <laughs> or going and searching for the Jersey Devil. Uh, there's the Jersey Devil one. Yeah, those are cool. Yeah, so those are kind of neat. So just little fun yeah. stuff like that. We wanted to spice it up. I like it. Uh, Sammy says, do you have a favorite general knowledge fact or does one stand out to you? And what is it? Favorite general knowledge fact. Uh, yeah. Well, here's, I don't know about favorite, but one we just recorded, uh, we just did an episode that's to be released in a few weeks on the Eiffel Tower. And every single day, the elevator, the hydraulic uh, pumps for the elevator lifts for the Eiffel Tower are greased down with beef fat. <laughs> there's no a good way. one yeah that is a good one it's a good greaser apparently and <laughs> i guess france i got a lot of a lot of beef fat laying around oh my goodness i love that um okay allison says when writing your chapters in the book did you find yourself in any type of writing routine such as same location same time of day same type of coffee or tea do you have any kind of routine like that when you write yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I think anyone who writes anything, um, whether it's a, a blog or a screenplay or books or whatever, uh, I think the key is sort of getting into a routine. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it's, uh, you know, writer's block can settle in a little more easily. Procrastination can settle in. So it's good to find a place where you're comfortable um, and cozy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and for me, that was, um, I have a, a sort of a, I don't like to call it an office um, cause that sounds too stuffy, but I call it like my studio upstairs mm-hmm. where it's my room. My wife has a little studio. I got a little studio. They're right next to each other and she's in there doing her. She has a, a natural bath and body company and is an herbalist. So she's in there working on soaps and new potions and herbs and concoctions. She calls it her little witchy work. And then I'll be in my studio right next to her. Uh, usually I do my best work in a, in a chair with a laptop in my lap instead of like at my desk. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I do have a standing desk, which is kind of nice oh. to move to, to kind of keep the juices flowing. Yeah. I uh, sometimes will put on music without lyrics, just some instrumental okay. music of some kind, mm-hmm. but not always. And uh, yeah, maybe some uh, English black tea. That sounds very peaceful. It is. I like to create a windows open because it was during yeah. the summertime, mm-hmm. get a breeze blowing and um, get ready for interruptions from my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get back on track pretty easy, so that's not a big deal. I would never, yeah. um, it, it's not too upsetting when she comes in and wants a little loving. Yeah, you need that sometimes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. 
Uh, Kaylee said, what is your advice to recent graduates? Here's your practice for graduation speech. Oh, well. Wow. Yeah. Do we need to do like the little pop? Like pomp and circumstance. Yeah, yeah. I'm the uh, I'm that thing. Um, I think, boy, just general advice. Uh, you know, kind of the advice I was giving uh, unsolicited to Caroline before we started, which is, don't be in a hurry. You got time. It's easy to think, and you know, like I said to Caroline, people are different. Some people do like to get going right away, and that's fine. There's no right way to do it, but don't feel pressured to jump right into a job. Um, take that gap year, go see the world a little bit, uh, figure out, unless you really, really, really know what you want to do right away, um, mm -hmm. take a little time to figure that out uh, because there is no hurry. You know, if you graduate when you're uh, like most normal people when they're <laughs> like 21 or so and not 24, 25, mm -hmm. um, that's still super young um, to be entering yeah. the job force. And and you do have time. You can take a couple of years and still be a whippersnapper going in there and stealing jobs from people my age. There's a lot of stuff you should know before you enter. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Go see the world. Um, so we have another question. Are there any topics you'd like to redo? As in you think you did it justice in retrospect? Well, we sort of had this uh, legendary episode on the sun that was... We always joke about that it wasn't great because it was so hard and really just dense science that uh, broke our brains. <laughs> so instead of redoing the sun, we just recorded an episode that will be coming out soon on um, sun. Uh, it was sort of more about the sun, sunspots. And, and just sort of additional information that we barely touched on in the first one. So it's almost like the sun part two, I think. Uh, I don't know if there's any that we would truly redo, redo. Mm -hmm. Although this first episodes, when I go back and listen, aren't great. <laughs> I'm surprised anyone liked them. <laughs> gotten better since then. Yeah, that's so fun. Um, Cameron wants to know, are you really good at trivia nights? I'm pretty good. Yeah. Uh, and I was pretty good before. Like I was a kid that grew up playing Trivial Pursuit, okay. and watching Jeopardy and yeah. like in Athens, my roommates and I would sit around and watch Jeopardy every night in our apartment at Baldwin Square, uh, right there next to the train trestle. And uh, I've always just been into trivia and knowing things about kind of everything, whether it's music or, you know, you can ask me just the random bass player from some random band 30 years ago and i'll call that up and my wife will always be like how do you know this stuff <laughs> like i just i've always sort of held on to these trivial facts and figures uh and i've always been pretty good at trivia i haven't done bar trivia in a long time we used to go a lot more uh before we had our daughter but um we, we feel that a pretty good team yeah. yeah would you ever make a trivia game i don't know if i can announce it but there's one coming <laughs> That's exciting. Yeah, there, there's a there's a board oh, game man. coming next we're year. We're all family here. Yeah, I don't I don't board think it'll family. be a big deal if I mention <laughs> that. But yeah, we got we got a game exciting. coming next year that oh we're super gosh. super excited about. No kidding, that is very exciting. Yeah, it's actually not a board game, but it's like card based, sort of like a lot of those games are now. We're ready for it. That's, that's I'm ready. It's pretty exciting. That is exciting. I won't tell you who it's with, but it's. Uh, People will be pretty excited about the the branding of it and and who okay. we're making it with. That's all I'll okay. say. Okay. <gasps> oh, I can't wait. And it's based on the podcast, so if, okay. if you're like a big time listener, these I questions are pulled directly from episodes. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's good to know. Um, okay, Elizabeth said, "Did you and Josh disagree at all while working on the book?" No. No, we're pretty okay. chill with stuff. Yeah. I think we. Uh, we have veto power over one another with topics on the show and technically probably with the book, but we rarely invoke it. And when we do, it's usually not like a hard no, like I just refuse to do that occasionally maybe, but I'm talking occasionally like every few years, one of us mm -hmm. will just say, nah, I really don't want to do that. Um, but it's usually more because it's something that I can't bite off right then. Uh -huh. because of scheduling and I'll be like, no, nah, man, I, I can't do that right now. It's just too much. Right. 
and we'll just, I'll kick a science topic down the road a little bit. Yeah. That's usually what happens, but yeah, we, we, we don't disagree that much about work stuff. Yeah. That kind of leads into Melinda's question. She was asking uh, if there's a particular topic that's your favorite to research, or if there's one that you don't like to research are the science ones, ones you just like, don't really like to research. Yeah. I've made yeah. that pretty clear, Yeah, <laughs> but Science it's, is... it's good for me to learn this stuff though. You right. know, I think, uh, Josh and I are both living proof that, and our, and our listeners that you should always want to keep learning, uh, whether it's taking continuing education or going back and getting a, a graduate degree or something like yeah. that. Something I believe it or not, I've actually thought about getting a graduate degree for some dumb reason, <laughs> because the only reason would be just to do it. Uh, yeah and learn things so you know there is value in it but um yeah i think people should always strive to keep learning yeah oh absolutely uh richard said have you ever changed your behavior as a result of something you learned in the course of your research for the show that's a good question uh i think i have a harder time answering that josh has he uh we did an episode on turkeys for Thanksgiving and he said that he's probably not going to eat turkey anymore because turkeys are really smart and uh, have families and, and are emotional. And uh, mm -hmm. I think we did one on octopuses or octopi. Both are actually correct many, many years ago. And then that new documentary has come out. Yeah. My octopus teacher and I quit eating octopus back then when we did the episode on it. And uh, so, yeah, stuff like that kind of happens where, I can't go back and put octopus in my mouth anymore. Yeah. You know too much. I know. Even though it's delicious. Encouragement, Chuck, to be a double dog. Just saying. Putting it out there. To do what? You're getting some encouragement to be a double dog. What is that? Is that a graduate uh, degree? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, a double dog. Is there a triple dog? Oh. <laughs> my dad got his PhD from Georgia many years ago, but he was a single dog because he didn't go undergrad. That's cool, though. That's really neat that he was there, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, Mark says, Chuck, if Stevie Nicks were in a movie, what animal do you think they would cast for her? What animal? Who said this? Mark. Mark who? Is there a last name? Koontz. <laughs> oh, Koontz. <laughs> He's an inside joke. You jerk. Uh, <laughs> yeah, his wife, uh, his wife, Gail, and I have an ongoing specific. rivalry that because she says Stevie Nicks sounds like a goat. <laughs> Oh, and I love Stevie Nicks, and I'm just so mad at both of them right now. Uh, I'll get back at you for this. Well, I'm glad that you're watching. Um, okay, Edwin says, Chuck, was the How Grass Works episode the biggest on air argument you've ever had? <laughs> Probably so. Time about it. <laughs> yeah, that and mustard. Uh, yeah, the grass <laughs> episode, uh, just so you know, Mamie, was one where we just talk about like lawns and like literally grass that you grow in your yard. And Josh thought there's a thing where you are supposed to water your lawn. I think it's like a quarter of an inch or a half inch. And what you do is, is you sit a cup out in your yard and whenever the sprinkler falls into it, it fills it up a bit. And when it gets to a quarter inch, you turn it off. And Josh thought that meant you literally have a half an inch of standing water all over your yard. And I, I was, it's fun to go back and listen to that little uh, discrepancy sometimes. Cause I just thought that was the funniest thing. It's like, are you kidding me? It's like, that's <laughs> drowning your lawn every day. It's like, you can't do that. And he said, no, I'm pretty sure. And he stuck to his guns. I'll give him credit. And uh, it, it sort of has lived on as one of the legendary like uh, uh, crow that Josh had to eat. Did you, did you tell him you studied botany at UGA? <laughs> Yeah, I got a D in botany. I mean, <laughs> should have brought that back around. I should have. That's really funny. Um, D said, thank you, Chuck, for the uh, Stuff You Should Know and Movie Crush podcast. How long do you think you and Josh will be doing the podcast for? Please say forever. Yeah, you know, we've been at it for 12 years, and uh, neither one of us wants to do anything else for a job. That's for sure. So the only thing that would happen is we would just mutually agree to retire it and retire from working. And, you know, I'm 49, Josh is 44 or 45. And that's too young to retire. So I would love to get to 20 years, which is in seven or eight years, 
and then sort of think about things like that's a good round number and 20 years is a long time to do something like this. So we're not saying we're going to quit at 20 years, but 20 years is our goal to get to, to then sort of reassess, like, do we want to keep doing this? A lot of good topics. A lot of things. Know, that's a lot yeah, of stuff. A lot of stuff. Um, Louise said, hi, Chuck. Thanks for your time today. I'm wondering as a podcaster, what is your favorite podcast to listen to? Mm, great question. I do love listening to podcasts. A uh, big fan of Judge John Hodgman. I think as most listeners know, John is a friend of mine and Jesse, the co-host, are both old friends. I like to listen to a lot of my friend's shows. Uh, the McElroy Brothers are pals. Uh, my friend Roman Mars has a show called 99% Invisible that's just great. But uh, The Flop House is a funny movie podcast uh, from, again, some friends of mine. It, it's actually, now that I'm thinking about it, there's not many I listen to that aren't done by friends of mine, but there is one called yeah. uh, Everything is Alive. And I can't recommend it enough. It's a weird little show where it's done in sort of an NPR interview style. But what they do is the host gets comedians on and interviews them and in character as inanimate objects. And it sounds really strange, but it's like an episode on a Coke can or an episode on uh, a street lamp. And they take on the persona and they're like, hi, I'm, I'm Fred the street lamp. And then they get into this really serious discussion of what it's like to be a street lamp. And they can be funny and uplifting. They can be heartbreaking. The Coke episode, like I literally cried at the end of it. I won't tell you what happens, but it's surprisingly emotional at times. Uh, and it's called Everything is Alive. It's really, really cool. That is cool. Totally original. That's a good one. Um, here's another question. Who did you give the first copy of your book to? The first copy, uh, and it wasn't because like, I have to give the first copy to the most special person. Uh, I gave it to my friend, Justin, who is a very special person, roommates at Georgia and lives about a mile and a half from me, not even. And I, I was dropping my dog off at his house and I threw a book in the car to give to him. So he was actually the first recipient. They gave us a box of like 25 books uh, to give away. And I've been kind of giving away to family and friends since then. Is that what you're going to give away for? I think that's what you should wrap for everyone's Christmas gift this year. <laughs> gift. It'll be part yeah. of the Christmas. It's a pretty, uh... Merry Christmas from me. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. I'll include me. it with some nice socks and stuff like that. <laughs> um, Leah said, did you enjoy the writing process enough to take on writing another book? I, I know some people had asked if this would be a series. I think uh, that's the idea. If it if the publisher wants to, uh, if it sells well enough, and they they you know, and if it's a worthwhile thing for them to keep doing, the idea was it to be part one of many. Mm -hmm. um, it was a lot of work though, so hopefully they would space them out accordingly. I don't know that I would want to take one of these on every year, uh, and I'm I'm not really sure how they do that, how they dole those out uh, as far as sequels go. Well, we're going to have to talk about that. But yes, the idea is that if it does well, there will be maybe, uh, you know, a, a more complete compendium of mostly interesting yeah. things or something like that. Would you ever think about a children's? Uh, there's one coming out, actually, where uh, and we didn't know that, but that's kind of how it works with a book like that's this awesome. is yeah. you once this one comes out, we're now working with another person on the Flatiron team to kind of retrofit it. Um, a few of the chapters are coming out like Jack of Orkian. <laughs> and, um, but it's, it's not going to change that much. We yeah. don't like, we, they don't want to dumb it down really. Right. They're just going to sort of make it a little more kid friendly. Mm -hmm. And, um, and there will be a kid's version, which I'm pretty excited That'd be about. Great. Yeah. It's pretty neat. Yeah. That is awesome. Um, okay. There's a question. If the Wayback machine was to break down at a particular point, <laughs> when and where would you prefer to be stuck? Ooh, great question. Who was that? That was, it didn't have a name. Oh, okay. All right. Unknown person. Uh, I used to say I wanted to go to the old West Ooh. because I have always been fascinated with it. And I think it'd be cool to be a cowboy, cowboy Chuck <laughs> ride around on a horse, yes. <laughs> but the old West really sucked. Um, <laughs> it was terrible. The food wasn't great and the whiskey was not awesome. And it, there was disease and, not hot water and uh it, it, the old west kind of stinks so i think i would um 
because I'm a big music guy, maybe go back to the sixties and be able to see mm. Hendrix and Led Zeppelin and the who and uh, Bob Dylan when he was young and all sort of these favorite old school artists of mine, uh, mm -hmm. Pink Floyd and like just spend a year going to concerts, go to Woodstock. That'd, that'd be, be awesome. Fun. Yeah. yeah. That'd, be cool. that'd be really cool. The fashion would be great. Too. Yeah. Sneak some of that stuff back. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right. Sherry said of all the topics you've researched and covered on the, on the podcast, which ones stick out, uh, stick with you the most? Definitely the history ones. Mm -hmm. Uh, I also like the Turkey. Yeah. The Turkey. Yeah. I also like the pop culture episodes. Mm -hmm. Um, we've done a lot of episodes on toys. Uh, in mm -hmm. fact, there's Mr. Potato, Mr. Mr. Potato, Potato Head. Head. Yeah. Yes. So we kind of have a fascination with old toys, mm -hmm. uh, slinkies and, uh, sea monkeys and all these kind of weird toys that captured the zeitgeist for some strange reason. I mean, there's the pet rock is no oh one can God. explain that. Yeah. There, oh, there's I no way it. of explaining it. Other I than love that chapter. That was marketing. so good. Yeah. It's fascinating. Yeah, I love, I love the toy episodes. Those are fun. Yeah. Those are fun. Uh, Ryan wants to know, do Emily and your daughter listen to the podcast? No, Emily doesn't. <laughs> uh, and I, I wouldn't expect her to, I mean, for 12 years, who, who wants to hear, like, I'll come home and talk about some of the most interesting things. Like I'll yeah, tell her the beef fat stat, uh, in fact, and stuff like that for the Eiffel tower. But, um, she's busy. She runs a business yeah, and is a mom and wife. So I don't expect her to listen. She has her shows that she likes. My daughter does occasionally. She likes, I listen, uh, like, I don't listen to stuff you should know, except the QA, but Occasionally, I will listen to some of the movie crushes in the car, yeah, uh, because those are just kind of fun for me to revisit. And and she sort of gets it now. She knows it's called a podcast. She knows Daddy's on the radio. Um, I have not shown her our TV show yet. I'm going to do that soon. I think uh, yeah. we did a TV show for one season back in the day. Um, but yeah, she she listens a little bit and she thinks it's kind of fun. She just goes, "Daddy, that's you." <laughs> and she knows Josh and Noel, my co-host on Movie Crush, and it's always kind of sweet. Uh, we took her to uh, Maine and Boston uh, when we toured there last Labor Day. And she came to the theater for the first time in Maine. And I really wanted her to kind of see me like walk out on stage in front of like 1200 people. But yeah. uh, she oh, it was the witching hour and she was four years old. And I was like, you got to get her out of here. It's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> so they went back to the hotel. So that'll be fun one day when she can see me get on stage. That'll be Absolutely. Really neat. Well, and like when you're when your family is all together, Mm -hmm. when, with friends maybe are you kind of expected to like if you're at dinner if you are you expected to be the one that supplies all the conversation no <laughs> all the starters <laughs> no i mean these are old old friends so they they know me they don't want to hear that yeah. out of me either <laughs> and that's kind of obnoxious to be like you know well actually <laughs> uh, i don't want to be that guy i think new friends and acquaintances yeah sort of look to me a little more to to do stuff like that uh, and I'll, you know, I'll jump in if, if it's fun, but I, I don't want to <laughs> just sit around and bore people with talking about interesting facts. <laughs> yeah. You'd be like, actually this Turkey you're serving us. Has right. feelings. <laughs> <laughs> You're very emotional. This Turkey had a family. Yeah. <laughs> um, Vanessa says, do you have a specific memory of recording the show where you were having a really fantastic time? I mean, that's most of them. We have a really good time when we record. Uh, the research and all that stuff is sort of the slog. Uh, and it's kind of like when you perform on stage, it's the travel and all that stuff is no fun. But when you step on that stage for an hour and a half, it's just the best. And we still have fun when we record. Um, I have a lot more fun with the shorties. Even those are a lot of fun because they're just a little bit looser, I think. And you don't have to pack your brain with as many things because they're only 12 minutes long. So I really, really enjoyed the shorty sessions that we do. And uh, we split those off and do them separately. Yeah. But yeah, we, we have a good time all the time. How do you or decide which do one's it? full? I know we had a question about that from Victoria. Which one is a full episode and which one's a shorty? How do you decide that? You know, it's kind of why the shorties were born. It's pretty instinctive. Like, you know, right away, if you can't, uh, even with personal stories and, and segues and sidebars, like we go off on tangents all the time, even with those, it's pretty easy to say like, there's no way we can get, you know, 40 to 50 minutes out of this. Yeah. Uh, and it'll, it'll be thrown in the shorty category, which is why we started those to begin with. 
Well, it, you've done a great job and we're so excited for you with this book. Thanks. Fans can follow you on social media. Keep up with all the stuff you should know. Buy this book, friends, because this is such a fun book. It's so good. Uh, and if you love the podcast, you're definitely going to love the book. Thank you, Mamie. Yeah, it was really nice congratulations. to meet you. It's so nice to meet you. And yeah. We're, I'm so excited for you. Congratulations on the success of the book already. I know that has to be such an exciting feeling. And uh, in a year when everybody is kind of out of sorts and it's not been the same for everyone, I know that having some good news like that is is encouraging and exciting. And this book kind of gives people something else to focus on. And that is so needed right now. So thank you so much. Thank you. That means a lot. Maybe Uh, we'll uh, bump into each other in that uh, sky suite at a football game next fall when when things are safe. (laughs) That would be a lot of fun. (laughs) Totally. I'll look out for you. Thank you. Hi, Caroline. (laughs) Hi. Thank you, Chuck and Mamie, for sharing that conversation with us. And thank you to everyone who joined us tonight. Both Chuck and Mamie have strong connections to the University of Georgia, and we can't thank them enough for sharing their time with us this evening. You can follow along with both Chuck and Mamie on Instagram and Facebook. At UGA, we never bark alone. We offer career development resources, opportunities for social and professional networking, and lifelong learning experiences, even from your own living rooms. So if you enjoyed this evening's program, stay in touch with us to learn more about opportunities to connect. If tonight's discussion inspires you to support one of the schools, colleges, or causes discussed this evening, we encourage you to donate to one of the funds that UGA designated to support students as we continue to inquire into the nature of things and, like Chuck and Mamie mentioned, stay curious. As a student myself, I can say that your support means a lot and does not go unnoticed. If you'd like to be directed toward a fund meaningful to you, you can email alumni at uga.edu or follow up in the survey that will be sent to each of you. Finally, I'm excited to announce the next book club selection. Join us in the new year as we read Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. We'll gather together to discuss the book with Delia during a virtual Q&A like this one on January 26th at 7 p.m. So keep keep your eye out for an evite in the next coming weeks. Friendly reminder that today's presentation is part of the Between the Pages series. You can learn more about upcoming sessions at alumni.uga.edu slash BTP. Again, thank you to everyone for joining us this evening. And in closing, go dogs. <laughs>